Okay, so today I want to talk to you about how you can use Starfish to set up your profile and your office hours so that students can make appointments with you um, and they can also access you through services and find people on campus and all that good stuff. So in today's session, we're going to talk about, first of all, how to have access to Starfish. And then we're going to talk about how you set up your profile as a faculty or staff. And as we go through these different options and preferences for your profile, we're going to get to the point where we can show you how to share your office calendars, so you can share your Outlook calendar with your Starfish calendar. Um, and then we'll move on to how you can set up office hours through your Starfish calendar, which will populate your Outlook calendar. So this is what we refer to as level one orientation. You need to log in first to Starfish, which is uh, found at my.woodbury.edu slash Starfish. There's a hot link there that goes to the Starfish webpage. Once you do that, you're going to log in just like you normally would with your Woodbury login that you use for the campus community. Once you've logged in to Starfish, you're going to see your profile page. Your profile page um, has a link right up there in the top right corner, so that's what you click on. You click on your name in the top right corner and this page will show up. This page is your profile page. Your profile page has three tabs. The first tab is your institutional profile. On that, the only thing that you need to do, you can, you can set it up whatever way you want to, but the couple of things I want you to do when you get there is, first of all, upload a photo so students can see who you are and they feel more familiar with you. Um, secondly, you go ahead and change your phone number to the number that you want students to call you at. So that could be your office phone number or that could be an administrative assistant if that's who receives phone calls for you and makes appointments. Um, you can leave the cell phone the way it is. That's a dummy number that's gotten put in there. It's an extra protection so that our cell phone numbers that are from Power Campus don't actually go out to the student population. Um, and then fill in a little bit about your general overview and a little bit about your biography. And the purpose of both of these, again, is that this is what students are going to see when they do a search for you or for a service or something like that. So first of all, they need to know what your responsibilities are and how, why they would go to you. What, what are the issues that they might go to you for? Sometimes it might be obvious, but for a lot of staff people, it might not be necessarily obvious what a student comes to them for. So that's why this is important. The biography is another place to help students to understand what, let's say, your research interests are or what your credentials are or your favorite sports team. Um, and so this is what you do for the first tab for the institutional profile tab, which is under your profile page. This is what your profile looks like when it's all merged in with the rest of Starfish. So Starfish, again, has a services tab. This tab is viewable by faculty, staff, and students. So if they were to pull up the services tab, which they can search for people and things and places, they can search for them this way, or they, it's just listed alphabetically. We've jumped down to the part where it says student affairs, so we're down at the S's. And when I open that up, you can see that my profile populates this because I'm associated with that service because of my role. So that's all done behind the scenes. This part I'm responsible for creating. This part is created by the Starfish Impl Implementation Team at Woodbury. So you can see the information that I filled in in my profile over here, um, my phone number, picture, all these kinds of things populate my profile here, which again is what students will see. And the other part of it is, is when I get to the point where I'm setting up office hours, the option for scheduling an appointment with me shows up right there for students. So they have, they can go directly to my Starfish calendar through that. The second part of setting up your profile is the appointment preferences tab. So again, this top part, you can decide what's meaningful to you. If you want to have students do walk-ins, if you want to find out about um, their appointment more in advance, uh, you can set those preferences there. Um, but the part I want you to make sure you fill out is the location. So you click on the green plus sign. When you click on this, it's going to pop out to a box that asks what type of location. So is it an office, phone, elsewhere, etc. I would generally um, re recommend that you put an office and a phone. So that way you can leave students open to having an in-person appointment, but they can also just talk to you on the phone if that makes sense for the conversation. Um, once you fill that out or scroll to the right option, you actually put in the name of the location, you click on save, and that's how it appears. So these are your preferences. You can also change them in the future, or you can delete them by um, optioning uh, the options over there. The second part of the appointment preferences page is the calendar managers. This is very important when you have people helping you, like administrative assistants helping you uh, schedule appointments. So it's very similar to the Outlook system where you have people, you share your calendar with them. 
In this case, you just click on the plus sign. A box opens up where you type a name. That's all you do. It automatically knows um, all the people at Woodbury that you could possibly share your calendar with, and you type in uh, the name of the Woodbury faculty or staff. So in this case, these are team members I have over in Student Affairs Academic Support, and we're always working with different students, and sometimes we realize that the student we're working with really needs to meet with my colleague Kelly or Evelyn, and so this way, having this preference here allows me to share my calendar with them and, and uh, vice versa. So that's the appointment preferences page under the profile. The last aspect of the profile page looks like this. It's the third tab. It says email notifications. But before you actually click on what you need to click on here in order to share your calendar with Starfish, uh, between Starfish and Outlook, you actually have to go to your Outlook calendar. This is the uh, screenshots of what it looks like for a Microsoft Office Outlook calendar. So this is for a PC. Um, it's a very similar look if you're, doing, if you're using Outlook on a Mac. Um, if you are using any other interface, we're going to recommend that you start using Outlook now for your appointments so that you can have these systems work so well together. Um, and essentially all you're doing is right clicking on your calendar name here. So if you have multiple calendars, make sure you pick on your own. You right click on that which opens these options. You scroll down to share, you scroll over to calendar permissions, and then when you get to calendar permissions, you want to make sure you um, add Starfish. So you click on add, you type in the word Starfish, and again, it magically finds Starfish within the Outlook system. It's already tucked in there in Woodbury. You click on add, and you make sure to populate these fields here. So this uh, read should be full details, delete items should be own, Write should be create items and edit own. And lastly, other should be folder visible. Once you've done all that, you click on apply and you are done. Now you have just allowed Starfish to be a guest on your Outlook calendar. Now your Outlook calendar will be able to receive things from Starfish and populate them. Just the way I would be able to send a colleague an invitation to a meeting, the same way Starfish will be doing that. So once you've done that, once you've allowed um, the permissions in your uh, Outlook system for your calendar, you want to go back to Starfish, go to your profile and the email notifications tab, and you want to make sure you click this box here that says, read busy times from my external exchange calendar. Once you check that box, you click on submit, and when you do that, you should see OK. If you have any problems with that, uh, the fine gentleman at our help desk um, can help you with that or you can contact the office, uh, uh, student affairs office and we can also help you with that. So that's how you share your calendar. So now let's go to the second part of the training which is about appointments and setting your office hours. So now that you've shared your calendar, your Starfish calendar looks like this. It falls under the appointments tab and the first tab under that is called agenda. Under the agenda, since I've shared my calendar, Starfish is now reading things off my Outlook calendar. So you can see this day, I had a meeting at 8 o'clock where I was prepping for something. And then at 9 o'clock, I had, lo and behold, a Starfish meeting about something. So it's reading these off my Outlook calendar. I'm the only one who can see this. A student cannot see the actual items. They only see that I have busy times. So now this, this reminds me that Starfish is connected to my Outlook calendar. So when I want to off offer office hours, I click on the office hours tab there and this box opens up. And you can again decide what your preferences are. I would encourage you not to make one massive block of office hours because if you ever had to change it, you'd have to delete the whole thing. So what you really want to do is kind of think about it in chunks as far as um, maybe Mondays and Wednesdays for a semester are the days that I only are, I'm going to be available right after class, three to five, etc. So you make a block for that, you might make a different block. So every time you want to make a block of office hours, whatever days or times, just go up and do this process again. So the process includes um, the days of the week, the times. These are the locations, if you remember from your profile. These are the locations that you added. Um, so these are the ones I had put. And I'm checking the ones that I want students to be able to take advantage of when they make the appointment. Um, you can allow for scheduled appointments only or scheduled and walk-ins. Um, you can give it a minimum of 15 minutes. You can have very quick appointments. So if you're having a very busy advising time and you really want students to be aware that they need to be on time and they need to work quickly with you, then you can set up a minimum 15 minute appointment. Now you can also set a maximum to be 20, 30, 45 minutes or an hour or, or even longer. Um, so it's up to you. You can put the range and then the student who's making the appointment actually makes the choice. 
So you're not limiting them to only 15 minutes, but you're giving them the option. If they just want to call you for a quick question on the phone, you can give them the phone option, you can give them a 15-minute option, and therefore your calendar really reflects what that student needs, and you're not blocking out massive pieces of time that neither of you really needs. Uh, the last thing are uh, just two items, appointment types. You're going to see different things depending on who you are and what role you have in Starfish. But um, right now I've got checked advising and student events. When I meet with students, those are usually the two reasons. And we have very broad categories that we use there. And the reason we have those is to start tracking what is it that students are coming to see us for, how is our time being used, especially faculty who do instruction and they do advising. So we really want to see how much of your time is going to both, and that can be important to you all when you're talking about um, job responsibilities in the future. And the last part on this, uh, adding office hours that I'll explain, is the instructions and the start end date. Instructions is anything you want to put in for your office hours. If you want to um, ask the students to check in with the receptionist when they arrive, if you want to ask them to give you a five minute window, either way, you know, if you're running late, you can put that in. Anything like that that you think that's important for a student to know. Or bring something special. If you want them to bring um, their syllabus or something like that with them, you can do that. But the really cool feature that I think everybody likes is the start end date. If you click on the start end date, you can set these to be reoccurring office hours. And instead of an end date never ending, meaning they just go on and on for your whole calendar, you can actually end these dates at the end of the term. So that way your office hours are good for this spring if this is the semester you're in, and then they stop at that point, and then you would set new office hours with a whatever, to reflect whatever your new schedule is. So you have other options there too, but that's something that people enjoy. So once you've filled this out, you click on Submit, and it appears on, so this is, so this is my Starfish, a dashboard, it appears on the right hand side and it tells me what office hours I've set up. So I go from this screen under the agenda page where I have my outlook showing up here and on the other side of this page this little office hour things pop up on the right hand side. And if you had to change your office hours or you needed to edit them or something like that you just hover over the little clock. A lot of things can be done with Starfish if you hover over the icon. So if you hover over the clock It'll open that up and you can edit it or delete them however you want to. So lastly, this is what it looks like when you set office hours and they're going to your Outlook calendar. So it comes to your Outlook just like a meeting invitation. So this should look familiar. You accept it just like you would a meeting invitation. It appears on your calendar. Um, it appears on your Outlook calendar and on your Starfish calendar it looks like this. So in this case, this is a student's view. So Gia is our student who has been our uh, case sample. So she is looking at my Starfish calendar and she chose this time spot to set herself up for an appointment. If someone else, another student, wanted to make an appointment with me and they go to my Starfish calendar, then they could click on this green plus sign, click on sign up, and that would put that student right on my calendar. But this student cannot see this student, nor can they see any other of the other meetings I have on my calendar. So even though I can see on Starfish, I can see things from my Outlook calendar. When I'm in a student view, when I'm looking at it from a student's view, all they see is time slot taken or time has already passed or something like that. So they'll see that no matter whether it's a student appointment, whether it's a meeting that my department set up or something like that. So that explains to you how level one orientation, which is how to set up your profile, how to set up your preferences, and how to merge your calendars between Outlook and Starfish so that you can have office hours for students. Please come back for the level two orientation, which talks about raising and clearing flags and also use seeing and viewing, filtering student records.